Good morning. It's good to be with you again. As we kind of close out our look in the Power of the Apostles Creed, talking about the resurrection uh, of Jesus from the dead. And today, what we're going to be focusing on are the consequences of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The, 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 it's always good to look at the, you know, what do we believe? What do we think about? Now we're, gonna, we're really going to move into the, okay, we believe this. What does it say? What does it mean? So what? And by the way, that's one of the biggest questions that we should always ask at the end of every sermon, at the end of every Bible study. Everything that we ever do, we should have a focus of, so what? What, why is this important? What do I do with this? Well, and, and so the first thing that we need to look at is, is the consequence of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. If he's truly raised from the dead, it's validating his deity. It's marking that he is truly God. He's been raised from the dead and he lives eternal. Now, we've had other cases in scripture where there were various people who were raised from the dead. I mean, Elijah raised uh, a, a, a child, so did Elisha. Uh, Jesus raised a couple people, Lazarus raised from the dead. But guess what? All of those individuals died again. Jesus didn't die. Excuse me, that's wrong. Jesus did die. Sorry, forgot a big word. Jesus did die, but he rose again from the dead. He's never dying again, ever. He lives eternal. Jesus, having once experienced death and having triumphed over it, would never die again. He was raised immortal, alive from the dead, and he still lives today, and this is vitally important. We do not believe that Jesus is in a grave. We do believe that he is at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and he's there, and he is coming back, and that's the other thing that we need to understand. The other consequence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is if we believe in this, then we can believe believe that he is coming back because he said he was going to do it. He said he was going to raise from the dead. He says he's coming back a second time, and at that second time will be the judgment of the world, and every knee will bow. Believer and unbeliever are going to bow. It's just that those who believe will be raised to life immortal in heaven, and those who do not believe will be sent to perish eternally in hell. And so the con another consequence is that it shows that every word Jesus ever spoke was true. Because he raised from the dead, we can believe the other things that he said. And some of them were hard. Some of them were easy to believe. Uh, but we believe that the, one of the consequences of the resurrection of Jesus is that his word is true. It validates that validates his teaching. If we believe in the resurrection, if we can hold fast to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we can look at the teachings of Jesus Christ and say not only are they true, but they should be followed. So that even the hard things, and you know, that we have to do uh, that are in scripture, uh, loving our neighbors, loving our enemies, this is, these are words Jesus said, and if we believe in the resurrection, then it validates his teaching, and we have to cling to those teachings. Even the ones that we just may struggle with, uh, we, sh we, we, we look at, and we're like, do I have to really forgive 70 times that? No, and, and we have to look at all of his teachings and say, if, this, if he rose from the dead, then what he said is true. I have to hold on to that. And so you have to cling to all of his teachings that are there. Cling to the teachings of seeking forgiveness of others, of giving forgiveness to others, of seeking to ask forgiveness from God, of seeking to put off sin and take on this cloth of, cloth of righteousness provided to us by the Holy Spirit. 
But the resurrection of Jesus Christ, beyond all the teaching and validating all of that, it attests to the fact that his work is finished. He, on the cross, said, it is finished. The, pay, the payment for sin was done. His resurrection from the dead finalizes the fact that there is life immortal for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Because Christ was raised from the dead, we know that we have the promise and hope that we ourselves will be raised from the dead bodily and spiritually. Now, this is a whole nother subject. What we believe about death at this point in history is that when you die, your body, your, your body obviously goes to the ground or you're cremated, whatever it happens to be. Uh, but spiritually, you ascend into heaven and we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ to be reunited bodily and spirit, body and spirit, perfect body, perfect spirit will be reunited at the second coming of Jesus Christ. His resurrection guarantees this. The difference that Christ's resurrection makes for us is that our faith has meaning. Our faith is not just a misplaced or a, wow, you guys really just kind of holding on to something, you know, to make you feel better about that. No. The resurrection of Jesus Christ gives our faith meaning and depth. But it also lets us know that we have forgiveness. I want you to think about if you're struggling with understanding or believing that G, that you could truly be forgiven of all of your sin, of all and it, you confess your sin to Jesus Christ, but you're still struggling. To, am I really forgiven? Yes, you are. The crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees this. You are forgiven. And it is no more. You are a child of God. That doesn't mean that we're not going to struggle with sin. We are. It doesn't mean that you won't struggle with doubts. We are. But bring yourself back to this all the time. Jesus Christ rose from the dead to guarantee that I would be forgiven. Other things that we know. Uh, we always say at funerals, you know, get to see our loved ones. And that's true. That is that is true. We will get to see all of those who've gone before us. But it's not just the ones that we know here on earth. We get to see all of those who've gone before us, who walked in the faith. <clears throat> they are there. And we get to worship and celebrate and enjoy eternal life with them. Now, I, I wish I knew what all of that meant. I don't. I can only... In my finite mind, I can only imagine a small piece of what that means. But I know this much, that that glory of all of those who are believers in Jesus Christ, raising up praise and adoration in heaven is going to be spectacular. And so that lets us know that we can be certain about our own future. We have a future. We have a future in heaven. I can't even begin to tell you the glory of what that is going to be. I wish I had a complete understanding, I, but my mind would probably explode if I did. It is going to be incredible to think about. If you look out today, if you go to a place where there is some beauty today, I, I have the benefit of being able to look out of my window, and you've seen the background in most of my other videos uh, as I'm outside. The woods here that I, my house borders on, I stand in amazement on a daily basis at the complexity and the beauty of it, and it is just a fragment of the beauty and of the glory that we will enjoy in the future. Our future in heaven that has been guaranteed by Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection. I want to close this part. Uh, I hope you will indulge me. Uh, I happen to believe that uh, we should be looking at all different aspects, uh, whatever the, the denomination is or whatever else. We should be looking at what are some of the positive, what are some of the good things that in each denomination, in each little segment of Christianity, what do they bring? 
And one of the things that uh, I've been able to study and look at is in the Orthodox tradition, Greek Orthodox tradition particularly, uh, they have just this incredible uh, ability to sing scripture. I mean, script, you know, straight from scripture and, and things like that. Uh, and so there's this beautiful, uh, but there's also these other things that they do, and they're so beautiful, and especially on, on, on Easter Sunday. Uh, they have these incredible, beautiful, rich services. And there's a part in the service where uh, it's usually towards the beginning. Um, uh, most of a lot of times uh, it's where the they're going into their building. They've started outside and they're kind of going inside and they get to the front. And the cantor, the person who's leading uh, kind of a, the singing aspect uh, of this, will turn to the congregation. And he will sing, and then they will respond. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. And then the congregation will respond, and there's just kind of, they'll go through it, you know, four, five, six times. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. And it's just this incredible, and it's this reminder, Christ is risen from the dead. He has trampled death, the final enemy, and he has given life. And what a joy. What a privilege it is we get to share that. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.